Good afternoon, everyone. Happy Monday. Welcome to the webinar, Setting the GPS, Creating a Career Success Focused Webinar Series for Adult Learners. So before I turn it over to our rock star presenter, I'm going to introduce you to Miranda Levat at Burlington English, our great partners. Hi, everyone. Thank you so much for allowing me to join you today. I am going to share my screen quickly. Um, and I just want to confirm that you can see everything okay. Wonderful. Awesome. Uh, my apologies if you are a regularly uh, a regular attendee of these COE webinars. You may have seen my wonderful partner, uh, Robert Breitbart, on these calls. While I cannot confess to having the same amount of energy that he does on a Monday morning, I can tell you that I am feel very privileged to be a part of the adult ed community, um, to be a partner of CoAbe, and I'm very excited to be here with Burlington English and sharing just a few things today about how Burlington English can support uh, career success and students' journeys. Um, I'm going to share just a little bit um, about how we at Burlington are thrilled to bring you these incredibly, uh, you know, valuable webinars. And today's topic is something that we have such a special interest in because educators use all of our career content to, you know, help students, all students reach their career goals. Um, so what I want to talk about first is kind of these very briefly, these three steps to success and how Burlington can really support um, and lay the foundation. And we do that with our Burlington core series where students have opportunities at every level, our language learners. Uh, to learn the valuable skills that they need to even have conversations with career counselors and speak about careers. You'll see in a lesson like this, that's exactly what students are going to be exposed to and be able to do. And in all of our core series, I want to say too that this is our kind of flagship course that is very tightly connected and correlated and developed upon the CCRs, the ELPs, all of our great, um, you know, CASAS reading standards and CASAS competencies. So you know at every level when they're being exposed to career preparation, they're also getting the rigor and intense critical thinking skills that they need to be successful. And you'll see some of those there. And then our second step is that focus on career planning. We really um, try to help support as much as possible all of our educators with some career exploration and soft skills with their students. So if you take a look here, we start again at the very beginning levels with those career pathways and helping students understand what that can look like, how that can involve not only various jobs, but education all along the way, which is absolutely wonderful for that exposure. And they've even got opportunities to start building their own portfolio, their own education plan, and also uh, a chance to see videos and work with career counselors, which they may or may not have been exposed to that much in the past, so they can see what that's going to look like and how they can be an active participant um, in meetings like that to plan for their future. And then Finally, we pull it all together with our wordless soft skills and courses for specific careers. So we finish with that very career specific preparation and support. You'll see on the screen now a list of career clusters in all of the 16 various careers that students can take a look, explore, learn more about, and teachers have opportunities to guide them along the way. And they've even got opportunities to actively participate in conversations. So for language learners looking specifically to, um, to get that boost in various careers, they've got an opportunity to do the listening and speaking aspect of it here in Burlington. So we have an intense, um, you know, amazing support for students on their career journeys. And like I said, we're super happy to be here. We're very happy to, um, to support our speaker today and want to say thank Thank you. You can contact us at burlingtonenglish.com and we hope you have a fantastic webinar.
Thank you so much, Miranda. Thank you, Burlington English. Everyone, please reach out to Burlington English with any questions. And if you um, forget their email address or anything, you can reach out to us as well, and we can put you in contact with them. I do see everyone introducing themselves in the chat. That's great. So I'm going to turn it over to Dr. Sophia Alston um, from South Carolina. Uh, she is here to present a great uh, session. So Sophia. Hello, everyone. I know everybody's on different times. I'm on the East Coast, so it's two o'clock here. So welcome, everybody. Um, thanks, Koi, for this wonderful invitation. And thanks, Miranda, uh, for all the work that you do. But once again, thanks, everyone that's on this call for all the hard work that you do uh, working with our students, ensuring that they are successful. So today, we're talking about setting the GPS, creating a career success focused webinar for adult learners. I am currently the uh, senior post secondary CT manager at ACTE, which is the Association for Career and Technical Education. I've been in higher ed post secondary for the last probably close to 20 years, as well as taught um, in post secondary. And I've worked with just many programs. Uh, intro to, I've worked with developmental education. I've worked with uh, students that retention and success programming. I've worked in, in just so many areas at a, a GED uh, school, just in so many areas dealing with adult um, ed and adult students. And I just love working with them. Um, so that's just a little bit about me. Right now I reside in uh, South Carolina. So ACTE, I'm just going to give you a couple of uh, slides of ACTE. Um, the vision is empowering uh, educators to deliver high quality CTE programs uh, that ensure all students are positioned for uh, career success. Our mission, provide education leadership in developing a competitive uh, workforce. Um, this is a little bit more about what we do legislatively uh, with policy and our uh, partnerships as well as our focus on career uh, readiness. We are the largest national education association of professionals dedicated to the advancement of career and technical education. Um, here are our various divisions and the division I closely work with is the PACE division, which is post-secondary adult and career education. And this is, this is who uh, is serviced by that uh, division. So educators, administrators, professionals, um, all across uh, post-secondary, including adult um, education programs. So what we try to do is promote quality uh, CT training that improves economic success to uh, those that we serve. So what challenges do adult learners face? Uh, we know that there are many challenges that our students, our adult learners face, lack of support, uh, self-doubt, uh, lack of time. And as you see these, if you think of any other challenges that your, um, your, your students are facing, feel free to put them in the chat. These are kind of the more general ones. Uh, lack of time, financial challenges, self-doubt. I put that twice because um, it's 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 a major issue for a lot of our students. We know that they have so much to offer. They know so much, but sometimes they doubt themselves and what they're able to accomplish. And so that can be a huge uh, barrier. Navigating contradictions, uh, as we know, the educational system um, isn't always a pleasant experience for everyone. Um, for a lot of people, especially disenfranchised folks or a racial ethnic minorities or low income folks, uh, there there are challenges. The educational system there there is there wasn't always such a great relationship, right? So when they come now to us to be educated or have some support, sometimes there's some trust issues and some contradictions that they need to work through uh, in order for us to move forward with them. So neuroplasticity, you know, that's the brain as you get older. You know, what are you able to retain and what are you able to to use moving forward. So these are some challenges. Anybody else list any challenges? No internet, health issues, language barriers. Yes, yes, yes. Thank you for that. So uh, professional development. 
what is professional development? feel free to put in the chat. When I say professional development and I link that with adult learners, what do you what is professional development or do we ever see professional development as something for them or do we see it more for us that are already uh in our professions? So these are some things we we ask. What is professional development? What do our adult learners need and how is that shown in professional development? So I see uh, thank you, education, to enhance your job and career, learning new skills that can be in our fields. I'm just reading off some great uh, info, preparing for our students for careers, current trends, driver's license, GED. Yes, you guys hit it right on the head. It's providing them the support they need to be successful, enter, and continue to do well in their careers. So how should it look? If I say how should professional development look? Think of how we as established professionals have professional development. A lot of times when I think of it, did I really have much at all, right? Or did I have to figure it out myself? Did I have something where someone came in and just spoke to the whole group, right? When you think of professional development, what did it look like for you? And do you think that it should look like that for our adult learners? So I'm just going to proper speech and communication skills on the job are key for us. Uh, career. So career days, confidence and self. Thank you. You can continue to uh, add into that. So, um, so adult le learning theory and professional development. So when we think of doing professional development for our adult learners, we have to think of adult learning theory. We have to build on the experience that they have. We need to be problem focused and solution oriented. They need to know why they need to know something, right? It's not just enough to say, you need to know this, but why do I need to know this? Um, Discussion-based learning opportunities, self-directed and self-evaluation. So these are some adult learning theory tips that we need to incorporate as we're developing professional development opportunities for our adult learners. So webinars and adult learners. And in the chat, feel free to write, what do you think are some benefits and some drawbacks um, to you know webinars with adult learners? second if you have time to to put in what do you think are some benefits and drawbacks so a uh, drawback could be losing interest lack of digital literacy um language barriers positives you can do it anywhere available to everyone no matter where they are don't need transportation that's definitely a benefit easy to fit in schedules Sometimes harder to engage and pay attention. Um, lack of long-term attention skills. You guys are right on the on the money. There are um, a lot of benefits and there are some drawbacks. And I'm going to talk about some tips or some ideas that can help us uh, mediate some of those drawbacks. So I'll talk about a webinar series that that we did. We have I have one for our pace group. Um, and it's a it's an annual webinar series. And what I found was, you know, I picked sent out a survey to all the 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 members in that particular division, and they gave different ideas of what they wanted for professional development opportunities. And the more and more that uh, we did the surveys, we got more and more questions about career, career laddering, um, working in the workplace, getting to the next space. So then uh, some of these topics include help from above, how to maximize support from your supervisor. Here were some of the topics that came up um, in the last series. I need help seeking support from a mentor and a sponsor. What's the difference between a mentor and a sponsor? When two become one, how to marry educational training and experience, making the pieces fit, how to make structural changes, you know, changes in your workplace or, or you know, where, where you're working, who's next, succession planning, um, were some topics, uh, teamwork, and combating imposter syndrome. So as you guys know, imposter syndrome is where you're somewhere and you feel like you don't belong there or you don't deserve to be there, even though you're fully and well qualified. And some of our students, as you know, might feel that way. So here are some additional topics 
that I hope are helpful for you if you decide to uh, create a webinar series. So work-life balance, that seems to be a huge challenge and issue. Understanding the working world, it's not the same as it was before. You know, before folks used to have a job for 30 years and that's it. Now people are transitioning from jobs every two, two years or so. So that's very different than what we, we even knew. Managing supervisors and dealing with coworkers. That's huge when it comes to uh, being successful in the working world. Positioning for promotion or higher position at another company, right? That's a huge topic that a lot of people are interested in. It's like, I'm here making this much per hour. I want to make more. What skills do I need um, to be able to make more? And then some of it, I think a lot are the soft skills too that many of our adult learners are struggling with. Resume and cover letter support, application and interview, pro interview process, mock interviews, um, knowing how to get, you know, how to, how to do an interview well, transferable skills from other jobs that you can talk about in the interview process or even in your cover letter and resume and deciding what career to move into. As we know, sometimes our students, they, they do a particular certificate and they need more experience in that. They might need an apprenticeship. They might need other opportunities to figure out if that's exactly um, what they want uh, to do. So talking about those things. Any other uh, topics that you guys have ideas on that have worked where you are? I know many of you have done some great um, professional development for your adult learners. So any other topics besides these that maybe you've come across? I see some folks putting in the chat and I want to honor conflict negotiation in the workplace, how using AI to write resumes, do mock interviews, email writing, right? Technology is uh, becoming very huge and can be very helpful. Self-care. Yes, that is a great um, topic for uh, a webinar. So thank you guys. Those are wonderful topics. Using think something happened to our screen. So I'm going to bring it back up. Soft skills, the point system. I'm going to come back and share my screen. Perfect. Thank you, guys. So steps to building a successful webinar series. Um, survey your adult learners for relevant topics. We know there's some great topics, but there could be even more topics that we are not even aware of or we didn't even think about. Be aware of and help mediate technical and digital equity issues, so platform issues. Um, this definitely came up when we spoke about the problems or the challenges that folks are having um, with webinars, right? There, there are digital equity issues. So um, seeking a platform that is universal, um, maybe folks, if they don't have internet where they are, they can maybe gather together with somebody that does have um, internet access and they can watch it together. So just thinking, just thinking about what those challenges might be. Adult learners should be a part of the development and the delivery, right? We have a lot of, you know, people learn from folks that they can uh, relate to. So just because the webinar is for adult learners doesn't mean that we can't have adult learners as the experts um, in this series. And I think that usually goes off very well. Feedback, feedback, feedback. Um, we have uh, a lot of, we want to make sure that, you know, as you're doing the webinar and as you're conducting series, you're asking them, how did that go? Was there something in there that we could have pushed more on? Did you like that? Didn't, did you not like that? And both, as I said, formal and informal, you can always send out a little survey, but you can always have little side talks to see how uh, your students feel about what was presented and how it was presented. So webinar, web, webinar format matters greatly. Um, I use, you know, Zoom, but there are so many wonderful uh, platforms. When I did this presentation before, there are a few others that were mentioned. So I'm not going to advocate for one or the other. You know which one would work for your students. But I think they should have these uh, main pieces, which is live and taped options so that you know, if they can't attend the webinar, you know, at that live time, they can go back and watch it later. Um, breaking out into groups 
um, setting up a collaborative environment. You might have a, a question and put them in groups and then have them have a discussion and come and report back out. That usually goes over well. Options to ask questions in the chat. Um, options to give surveys or polls. You just want to be as interactive as possible. And the platform is great if you have a platform that can send reminders about the the webinar. I think somebody has their hands up. And I don't know if Bethel, if folks can just go ahead and ask their question or not. If that's okay. I think she'll she'll get back to me and then we'll open up. Uh, music. Sometimes when you come in, I'll have webinars while coming with music. You want to keep it exciting. You want to keep it fresh um, as you're doing your, your webinar. So ways to strengthen the impact is, as I said, follow up, provide additional resources after the webinar. Um, challenge your adult learners to apply a tip or trick they learned during the webinar and come back and tell you how it went. You know, that usually you want some some practical side to it and create a motivating and encouraging um, environment. These topics and these issues can be uh, very challenging, especially when dealing with self-doubt and some of these challenges that our students face. So you want to create an environment where people feel it's it's okay to talk, that it's a safe space, and that they're leaving encouraged, feeling that they can um, do better and improve as they're entering into the work world. A lot of our, our folks, they might be scared or nervous, you know, especially if it's a new field, a new area. Um, so you want to continue to encourage them in this webinar and beyond, um, in your webinars and, and beyond as they're moving forward in their uh, careers. So additional opportunities, we have webinars, we have various things. I uh, have a post-secondary CTE summit um, every year, this time it's in Chicago and focusing on the future of post-secondary CTE. We're talking about best practices. We're talking about the future of teaching and learning. We're talking about partnerships. We're talking about uh, research, um, conducting research and research for effectiveness and practice. So what's really nice is COEB is working closely with us on uh, one of our panels, which is looking at adult learners like the the like we're better together. So looking at the pathway from adult learning into post-secondary CTE and how can we work closer together so that we can build that pathway um, for students from their entrance, right? So adult ed and a lot of our areas very represented throughout the sessions, the topics that will uh, be there. So if you are interested, be sure to join us because I'm sure you'll have a lot of information you can take back to um, you know, back home. So I'd like to acknowledge a few people, our professional development committee, uh, our PACE members, our webinar attendees, and all the folks that continue to give uh, feedback as we're trying to have more professional development opportunities. Um, so next steps in setting the GPS. Um, I would say if you had to kind of have a takeaway uh, from this webinar is the more centered it is on the needs of the students, the more successful your webinar is. The more you're able to have um, the, the best format that will speak to them and engage them, the more successful your webinars will be. And I think that having career-focused webinars are very important for our students. A lot of them are getting the technical skills, they're getting their certificates, but then their success is dependent on how well they do um, in their courses and, and getting their, their, you know, th their various certificates, their various degrees, but in the workplace and being ready for the career, that's, that's, it's almost like a whole nother set of courses um, that they need, right? We've got that soft skills training. We have the some personal issues. We have the understanding of the workplace. We have all of these. And I feel like if we couple that with the education that they're getting, then they're sure to be successful because I believe you can't have um, one without the other. So I want to, I think I left a, quite a bit of time for us to um, have a discussion. I know throughout there were some hands raised. So um, Beth, if, if folks can. Now is a great time for folks to give their questions or provide any comments or feedback or ideas on uh, what what is working for them. 
Mariah? Okay, I see some questions here because I'm not able to hear your questions. So how do you advertise? Um, through all the the members, um, we kind of send e-blasts, sometimes works. Um, sometimes we send it to our members and have them send it to their their uh their adult learners. Um we let me see if I can. I'm gonna see if I can read the questions. I usually offer a series. Um, I've done it where it's about maybe eight, eight to 10 at most webinar series, and then try to have topics that are similar. I try not to have it around holidays, so I wouldn't have one like November and December and around times that I know are uh, busy time, busy time. So uh, so that's how I kind of think about it, because those I've done it where it's the busy times and people don't really attend. And I want as much people to attend there to go back and watch. Um, let me see if I have. Um, Daniel said, I completely agree with the environment. Environmental development equals professional development. I would say um, that's some great points. Um, if you have any more um questions please feel free i have some questions for you um do you currently uh have a webinar series for your adult learners and is there anything in this presentation that you feel would help you develop um your series if you didn't if you don't have one already And for those that don't, are you going to start to offer uh, maybe a little series? How do you help to motivate students to participate by taking the time from their busy lives? I think that um, that's a very good question because it it is. I think you have to impress upon them just how important the series or the topic is to them being successful moving forward, um, having those conversations that this, you know, I guess for me, stressing the importance and trying to encourage as many as possible, because sometimes if they know their peer is watching it, they might come on and 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 watch it. So in essence, it's like you're creating a community of learners with the series, right? They're already a community of learners, but you're trying to bring in this whole side of um, this, this career readiness piece that they might not um, be getting in their in their courses and in the other programming that they are giving. So um, I would say just continue to advertise, continue to pr promote, continue to encourage them, continue to state why this is so um, important. It it could also be how you how you market and how you you say what it is about. Like you don't want to miss this. This is this is gonna help you be able to make more money. You have to talk, you know, talk the talk that is gonna kind of bring them um to the table. Right. And I think you get them to come too by I said asking some of some of them to speak. Cause if they're coming to speak at the series, they're gonna probably tell their friends and others to come on and see me because I'm gonna be a main guest talking about my journey or my lessons or what I think, you know, what I think and feel. So that's why I said, if you have them apart, if you form like a little committee with them and have them help to design, they'll also help to um, promote it for you and get their friends to come um, and, and learn. So I'm trying to go through... So folks, I'm glad to hear some folks are going to try to do a little series. And as I said, you can say uh, that part too, is like, if you can't attend that day and that time, that's fine because it's recorded. So you can always go back and watch it and still get the main tips of what, you know, was done, what was said, what you can learn from. Sometimes with webinars, you might do like a quick 
post note to say, here are the five main things from this webinar that you need to know. You know what I mean? And if you want to know more or more detail on how, go back and watch it. You know, so sometimes a little post teaser, a little pre teaser might uh, be helpful um, for students or, you know, for our adult learners as they um, to encourage them to be a part of the series. Okay, we have some folks offering some some support on the soft skills. Well, um, okay. So, um, if anybody has any more questions, um, let me know if you have any private questions. My email is uh, below and I will definitely uh, get back to you and encourage you. I think that webinars and some of these short, even short clips, you know, when I gave this presentation before, some people just send out little short little clips, right? You know, we have all of our little social media pieces and some, sometimes sending out a little clip with a little message um, grabs their attention um, as well as we have, you know, Facebook, we have all of our little social media uh, avenues that we can use um, to grab the attention of our students. So if you know of any, if anybody does do webinars uh, and has, you know, someone that they use, um, definitely put that in the chat. Um, as I said, I kind of just use simply um, Oh, here's a good idea. I think a webinar about using uh, LinkedIn for adult learners with professional backgrounds from their previous countries would be helpful. Even if they need a bridge job, it prepares them for getting back into the career. So Elizabeth, that's a great idea. As I said, the platform, I'm sorry, I use is kind of Zoom and I just do it like you host a meeting, you know, like this, but there are some more, more high tech um, type of webinars and webinar series, you know, webinar um, programs, but this one I use, and it seems to, this seems to capture some of the, the ideas that I said about um, having it be a community, splitting up in groups, polls, taping it. I think it has to have kind of those central things um, to really help you um, with your adult learners. So as I said, I don't know if anybody has any other platform that they use an idea they would like to share um, with the group. Um, if not, if not, as I said, my email is below as Austin at actonline.org. Shoot me a message and we can see how we can uh, work together. I'm definitely open for tips on improving or learning more from you about how you um, get your students involved and how you can help them as you're preparing them to be uh, career ready and successful along their path. I once again, thanks. Uh, Kawabe for inviting me to do this uh, webinar and I thank you all for all the hard work that you do um, with you know our students and preparing them to be successful. Thank you so much Dr. Alston. Um, I'm going to launch a poll if you could take that before you leave. Also um, the Recording will be sent to you as well as um, the handouts. Um, they will also be posted to our website as well. Um, and if you take down her email address to contact her, if you forget her email address or can't remember, you can always reach out to us and we can put you in contact with Dr. Olson as well. Um, and then you should receive your certificate for attending uh, tomorrow afternoon. So look in your email for that as well. And we thank everyone for joining us today. And we thank Dr. Alston for presenting this great session for us. Um, and then again, you guys can reach out with any questions. So thank you everyone and have a great rest of your Monday and a great rest of your week. Thanks so much. Bye everyone.